Cheap Joe's Art Stuff. My name is Julie, and today we are here with our very own Leslie, and she is going to talk um, about her process, some of her favorite materials. We're going to be doing some painting and creating today, um, but this picks up on um, a longer discussion that we've had in a prior video about like her experience level and what she brings to her work, and so she's going to show us a little bit about all the cool stuff that is her favorite art stuff to use. So uh, tell us a bit about this smorgasbord of, of awesome here. All right. What you got? Well, I try to keep things simple and limited. Mm -hmm. um, so I have just a few things, some, um, my favorite watercolor, this is my whole palette, mm -hmm. and um, papers and um, brushes. Those, and then, um, using each of those as far as they can go. Um, so I really, really love quill brushes yeah. because they're beautiful for <laughs> one. <laughs> and yeah. also they can do like a, like a really thin line all the way to a really thick one. So you can, mm -hmm. whatever you're doing in the moment, it can do. Like you right. don't have to say, oh, I'd like to do this um, small line now. And then you have to stop and do that. So I kind of mm -hmm. like that about them. Graphite, water-soluble graphite is amazing. <laughs> um, yes. When I found out that that happened and it could be erased and then polished to make it shine or parts could remain matte, that, I mean, I was like, oh. <laughs> so that was really kind of exciting. I know you can erase watercolor, but it's mm -hmm. just different. It's, and it's, right. um, graphite's grainy and um, it's just got a certain mood to the gray. Mm -hmm. And gray's obviously my favorite color. <laughs> um, <laughs> We're talking and about how funny it is that you and I have a, like a synthesis of gray some days. Yeah. We'll walk in and we have, we both have our gray. Yeah. I get made fun of for only wearing that. But, yeah. <laughs> and but then, yeah, and the kind that we have that you're using is yeah, uh, our art graph. graph. Yeah. Yeah. And it's a, a watercolor graphite. So it's a little bit of graphite with uh, gum Arabic in it. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's just beautiful. And they have been making um, some really weird kind of graphite products that I can't wait to get into, like the powder, uh -huh. and then there's these sticks and these weird tools that you play with. So and the I'm putty. Gonna, the putty is the putty, really weird and Really weird, but totally yeah. fun. So fun material. Mm -hmm. um, I really like a lot of the Daniel Smith Primatech because they're made from, they're ground from stones, mm -hmm. like actual mined stones, and so they have these really weird characteristics like some are sparkly i know i'm not as much into the sparkle as you are yep. but it's neat <laughs> granulating <laughs> and, uh -huh. and they're they're usually um real subtle i made a bunch of color cards so that leslie's um, <laughs> all in the color card camp and we appreciate <laughs> that if you haven't seen we have videos about using color cards and making it's color really cards handy. yeah yes because it, it's inspiring to see these out you're like oh you start to get excited about color and then you can what i do is i collage with them so i'm like okay today i kind of want to deal with these so i'll mm -hmm. limit to those couple of colors or if i want to throw in a third i can try out a bunch of different ones um, since what I do is so, the process is so transparent, I, I do have to make certain decisions before I go in. Right, so. and I think with some people, they do go in with a very clean idea, yeah. and then sometimes it gets muddied, you know, when you have all these options, yes. and sometimes it's better to, to hone the idea yeah. before you go walking into it. Yeah, and I like to choose specific color, because I don't do a whole lot of color mixing, I kind of like to use the color straight out of the tube mm -hmm. as a, um, almost like a crayon, like this is the color that it is. That's right. And uh, that's, yeah. that's fun to me. So it makes me pick colors that aren't necessarily a balanced palette like mm -hmm. you would normally have for a watercolor. Right. But like um, Holbein Shadow Green is a really gorgeous, dark, moody green that I use a lot. That and that's thing. one that you've been using with uh, some of the Celtic inspired and... Um, the Infinity Knot yeah. type thing. Yeah, the mm -hmm. Eastern Knots, yep. And yeah. especially with that, the Windsor Newton Payne's Gray has just the right amount of blue in the gray. Mm -hmm. compared. Like I tested all the Payne's Grays and that was the one because I do use them straight. I use them like ink. Right. In a way where you just, it's just straight out on the paper. Well, and some of the Payne's Grays have a, they're subbing a lot of phthalo in there. Yeah. And so they don't, they don't have that smokiness anymore. Yeah, exactly. They have that weird. Uh, yeah, every brand is different. Uh -huh. and, I mean, that makes it kind of fun. And um, 
The other one, let's see, Blue Stone is the one that I just got from American Journey that, um, yeah, that's a really Dreamy. cool color. Um, I don't have a color swatch of it yet. But We're it's go I'm really gonna be gorgeous. playing with it. I've got it in okay. my little limited palette for today, but yeah, yeah. it's heavenly. Yeah, so that, that kind of color range and um, looking for really physical characteristics in the paint, more um, sometimes only more so than the color, mm -hmm. so. Um, paper is the other important thing. Um, I like Stonehenge a lot. This is actually the printmaking Stonehenge that's been around forever, and I've right. been using that because you can do anything with it, like drawing or um, washes, anything like that. And they just came out with the watercolor paper, mm -hmm. which is really cool. So I like doing stuff on that now too. So that's kind of my go-to. And mm -hmm. then the this is the Cotty paper. It's like a handmade paper that. Um, is made of cotton and it's got these crazy decal edges and the surface is just so homemade looking and unrefined so mm -hmm. it's a neat difference to me versus the stonehenge because <coughs> then the paper has a lot to do with how the materials act so. right yeah and the finish you can see here where yeah. it's you know how granulating it exactly. is and and then when you frame it you know you float it like where the edge just comes like this and then the edges are nice. I, I like that. It's so beautiful <laughs> like that. I love yeah. it when you can make use of the deco and yeah. enjoy the whole thing. Yeah, because it makes an object, you know, it's not yes. just, it's not back there, it's a, it's an object, almost like a sculpture, mm -hmm. so. So we're gonna do some fun stuff. And yes. also you were gonna talk a little bit about this tape. That oh, my you, favorite tape ever. Yeah. <laughs> and this Which is how you're doing silly. the infinity knots. Some of them, yeah. Some of them? Uh-huh, yeah. Okay. They're uh, these larger geometric drawings. And um, this is the only tape that I've found that uses on paper. Um, it's Scotch Low Tack Artist Tape. And it is super, super smooth, and it won't pull up the paper at all, like ever, ever. Mm -hmm. And so you don't have to worry. You've done all this intricate taping and work, and then you pull up and it rips up because that makes you cry. Yeah. But, um, and then it makes me it, say bad words. But, yeah, you know. <laughs> on top of that. Yeah. And uh, it makes just a super clean line. So, um, like, this is some of the water-soluble graphite I taped off on this, the Stonehenge earlier. And it, it's just like when you untape it, it's like, <gasps> angels sing. <laughs> and, <laughs> oh, I just love that line. Yeah, it's, it's satisfying. Yeah, it really is. They should have more um, untaping videos on yeah. YouTube. Yeah, Cheap Joe's ASMR. Yeah, untaping. <laughs> I'm going to untape. Um, so, yeah, and then you can see in there, within that strict hard edge form, the, um, the graphite, this graphite does all kind of weird, neat things mm -hmm. in there, so I like that. Oh, it's pretty. And that's what we're going to do, um, <laughs> which is, these are some examples of um, making kind of a pool or a puddle with a water-soluble graphite and dropping in some color here or there. Um, like you can see here, I um, forget what color that is, maybe Terra Verte. <laughs> uh -huh. um, this one's got some Quinn Gold. Um, so just dropped in there and then leave it to dry and just kind of see what happens. Like that's the fun part to me of any watercolor, or water media, is that you can push it around and stuff and then you go to bed and you wake up the next morning and it's done something really cool. So there's not um that lack of control is really you get a surprise right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then on top of that i like to use a mechanical pencil to do these kind of slow lines um that make this for a kind of meditative um headspace mm -hmm. um on top of all that um organic stuff underneath so we're gonna do that today i love it Yay. i'm so excited <laughs> so let's move these out of the way and we're going to work on um, Stonehenge. Um, this is their warm white. They have another thing that's cool about them. They have these little shifts in tone of the, the temperature of the paper, which mm -hmm. I think is really fun. Using a Princeton Neptune brush because it's it's a one of their quills. It's it's synthetic, but it's really, really thirsty Yeah, and, and holds a point really soft. well. Yeah, I love this. I can do anything with it and we need a lot of water. Okay. <laughs> so load that up because these are thirsty. These um, little pans are pretty thirsty. So you just get 
you know, whatever on there, and then we'll see what happens when we put it on the paper. I don't <laughs> test anything. <laughs> I like it to so be a this surprise. This is where Julie starts to freak out. <laughs> Lose control. Yeah. Ah. And then, so, you know, just whatever you want to drag it around, and you can see how it kind of saves the mark, which I think is yeah. really cool of the brush. And then you can push it around with even more water. See, I would almost be tempted to make a pool yeah and then drop in yeah just because i feel the need to control things <laughs> more you're doing good and i mean you kind of know how it's going to turn out but then when it finally dries it's a nice surprise so and so you can get like that's adding a bunch of water and it's granulating a little bit more mm -hmm. this looks too much like a face though i'm gonna have to just Wipe that right out. Like anything you want to do, this brush will do in the moment. So because yeah, this is this is more like a um, action to me, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, this really is very very sharp. Yeah. And then if you want to. Um, drop in, I don't know, some sort of color that it want or not. I might go with a... I think I need to tone that, like, take a little punch out of this. Sad. Soften the edge. Yeah. And the, I was worried it's like going to be super texture. dark. Just with the mark. It's cool. Yeah. And this is doing interesting stuff in yeah. different places, so... Yeah, and you can't like sometimes I um, tip them up to dry them and or like turn upside down and then it'll make a weird pool and then you um, come back later and it's done something you didn't know. And then this is one of those weird uh, Daniel Smith colors. It's like, Ooh. And that's going to granulate a whole, whole lot. Um, I think that one is zoocyte. Yeah, and like you said, that whole series is made from ground semi-precious stones. Yeah. And they all do behave differently because, yeah. like, just basically they are chemically very different. Yeah, there's really nothing else like them. I yeah. feel like I'm collecting rocks in a way because I have, obviously, I have a rock collection. <laughs> but, um, um, yeah, so you get this, get rock paint. Yeah, and I am using the, the Cheap Joe's American Journey Blue Stone because, I don't know, the whole thing just feels very smoky to me. Yeah. That, that color is just like a it's enchanting like a smoke color. Yeah. Cool. So, um, I think I'm going to leave that. Yeah, I think I'm... Now. This and is the good part we'll because you don't have later. to deliberate a whole ton. It I kind know, of that's makes what's nice. You just kind of play with it, and it's all in the moment. It's a happening all by itself. Yes, it is. Yeah. Cool. That's neat. Ooh, Ooh it's growing. <laughs> 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 okay, so I'm going to put this one aside. Okay. Um, if you want to play around with the pencil, do you want to do any lines yeah, or anything like I don't, that? Um, um, I this got my plain old number two for okay, standardized test works. taking. <laughs> yeah. This what you can see here, the difference between the watercolor version of mm -hmm. Stonehenge and the printmaking version, because this one holds the brush strokes. It's just because of the sizing. Right. So both, and this one's much softer and, um, you know, rounder. Yeah, in terms <laughs> so of tooth, just, they're pretty similar. Yeah, exactly. Because um, I love hot press. That's my... Um, and then there's home handmade mm -hmm. paper. So it's like, I go between the extremes, but. Okay. And for the lines, I usually just do freehand. I need my glasses. <laughs> I'm gonna put something under my hand for That's this part, because I don't know. I'm gonna start in the middle so that I know um, the line is straight to begin with. Not that that really matters, but that's my rule <laughs> for myself. <laughs> This is ASMR. Listen, that pencil. I know. That's a sound I don't 
totally enjoy. Oh, uh, really? Yeah. Well, you know, because honestly, when I'm at home by myself working in my little studio, there's a lot of music going on, and uh, it's right. really loud. Yeah. Because um, I don't, like, especially with colored pencil, you'll lose your mind. Yeah. Like, listening to that stuff. Yeah, I definitely, um, like when I'm doing a big batch of work, I like to put on podcasts or... Mm -hmm. um, now, do you like the educational ones or do you like the like talky true ones? Crime. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> There's some really dark stuff going on out there and some podcasts that's um, just fascinating to me. <laughs> and then not to be... Um, too kind of annoying, but I live in a really beautiful place <laughs> where uh, it's like on top of a mountain all by myself and there's birds tweeting and my wind chimes and the wind's blowing. So that's, you know, all in here when I make work a lot of times. So I don't actually meditate when I do these, but it's got the, the same feeling It has the same me, effect, like yeah. Very calming. And this is what I was talking about with um, people resonate with that or, or they get it. Mm -hmm. um, and they can feel that, comp they can empathize with the process um, because drawing is more transparent, I think, than painting. Like, it's less of a mystery how it happens. You can see the mark. Right. Um, everybody's drawn something at some point in their life. So it's this neat connection that I really was surprised people got into. I'm trying to decide if I want to go all the way or not. Maybe just half. Ooh. I love listening to uh, the Hound Tall podcast with Moshe Kasher. Jess, I don't myself. know that one. Oh my gosh, it's so fun! They have a panel of comedians that sit down and have a substantive conversation with an expert in a particular field. And the comedians have a way of derailing conversation <laughs> <Really>? routinely. <laughs> yeah. I remember the very first episode I listened to was they were talking about um, um, funerary services, cremation <laughs> and stuff like that. And this woman was an expert in <laughs> that whole industry. Oh, it just went downhill. But it was so <laughs> much fun because you're learning something. Yeah, but it's also but funny. It's ju yeah, it's pretty much like sitting around in a high school classroom when you were 15 and, <laughs> you know. And you can see the, um, this is something the Viarco rep actually pointed out mm -hmm. that didn't occur to me before, that graphite stays matte until you polish it with pressure. Mm -hmm. So that's why the pencil is like this shiny graphite on top of the mm -hmm. matte brushed on. So I thought that was cool. I think that's all I'm going to do for this one is just leave half done. Yeah, I think I'm going to probably quit too because it feels like this is balanced by this. Yeah. By that, so. Yeah. And then you could, um, you can erase this stuff too, too. like on this one. You can see like little bubbles of graphite and then I went back in and erased out. So you could go back and forth just mm -hmm. like you would with any kind of charcoal or graphite. Now were you using an erasing shield or just? I used that and a uh, electric eraser. Okay. So that it just, you know, really pinpoints the, um, the graphite. I like it because so. the bubbles are kind of in contrast. Yeah. It's like a yeah. positive negative thing. Yeah. And it's like a reaction. All the stuff on top is a reaction to what happened in the moment on the bottom. Mm -hmm. I kind of like that idea. I love it. So thank you so much. Thank you this for playing along. Fun, yeah. <laughs> and we'll have some stills of our little finished pieces here at the end. So, well, thank you for joining us and we hope that you enjoy. Thank you. <laughs>